this game that you did announce, probably the greatest college basketball game of all time. I tell her it, it, it's the greatest college basketball game of all time, period. 6 OT, Syracuse, UConn, the, the rivalry, the Big East tournament, Madison Square Garden. It was just kind of like set up for it, it, for greatness. You know what I mean? Like the Big East tournament, Sean, you know, it's different. You know what I mean? It, it matters yeah, Square, those I miss lights it. are a little bit shine. <laughs> those lights yeah, are. Yeah, I really bit miss shiny. it. The ACC tournament's not the same. You know, yeah. I'm trying hard to love it, but uh, it's not the same. You know, Madison Square Garden, just those rivalries, the Saturday night championship game on Broadway, all the juice walking in there. Um, yeah, but you know, you and I have talked many times over the years, and. I have never asked you this. Like when you shot the ball at the end of regulation and it went in and you jumped on the table. Yeah. Did you know it wasn't, did you know it was a fraction late or were you not sure? Or did you think it was, it was going to count or what was going through your mind? Now, you, now, you know, I thought it was good. All, mm -hmm. all that, that would have not happened if, if, if I knew it wasn't good. I mean, it was just kind of like a, Spur of the moment. You see it go through, and then the emotion oh, takes over. I, you should go crazy, you know, because it was it. A, a huge shot. And I blame Peter Dingle. Uh, well, I don't even know if you know that, but Peter was the camera guy who was on the court, basically right in front of the, our table, you know, like seated on the court. And he was the one who had the shot from half court where you kind of – you could see the ball. It was the one shot that the ball was still kind of on your fingertip, and you saw the clock go to zero. And if, if Peter didn't have that great shot, they would have counted because originally they counted it. So you have to, you know, if you don't know, you stick with the call on the court in, in real time. So, but no offense, you know, people would have remembered that quite a bit, but we wouldn't have had the greatest game you ever played in, the greatest game that I've ever called, <clears throat> the six overtimes, if, uh, if, if they counted the bucket. Yeah, I, yeah, if it counted, we wouldn't even, I wouldn't even be asking you this question at all. No. Right? I tell that we wouldn't be, you know, the name of your podcast would be not be the scores table. It would not be the scores. Well, actually, it probably would be because you, you know, it would have counted, and that would have been a big moment in the history of Syracuse basketball. But I'm not sure it'd be quite as remembered as the six overtime game because no, that was it, it, it was incredible. It, it would have been it would have been a good, you know, because he he threw it full court, it bounced once, it came to me, so it, it was it was a tough shot, but. Without the six OTs, I mean, we, I don't even know what we're really talking about. T take me right. through that night, though. W you know, some of the the calls that you guys were making. It was you, Jay Billis, and Bill Raftery. So, I right. Mean, you know, all three of you guys are uh, you know legendary. You know, talk about well, that night and just what you remember. It's uh, well, you know, there's so much that went to into it um, that I do remember. Um, I, I think the most remarkable thing about the game, and I've said this a lot over the years when we've talked about it is you guys, Syracuse were never ahead in any of the first five overtimes at any time you either tied or behind, tied or behind, tied or behind, but you never had even a one point lead for three seconds at any time in the first five overtimes. So to play under that pressure and continue to get it to the next overtime was unbelievable in and of itself. I mean, Never mind the six overtimes. That'll probably never happen again. But, but if it does, one of the teams is not going to be behind for 25 straight minutes or of right. game action or tied and make it to a sixth overtime. That, that was just incredible. So um, who is your pal who got in the game and was a deep bench player who was doing jumping jacks while everybody else was Justin dragging? Thomas. Justin Thomas, right. Uh, yeah, I, that visual stands out to me. You know, all the great plays, all the big shots, all the, you know, if UConn having shots at the buzzer of a lot of the first few overtimes that if they went in, you know, I remember LaCall, some of those were, no, you know, overtime, number, whatever. You know, it's like you had to dodge some bullets. I can say now we had to dodge some bullets, right? You can't <laughs> – it's so hard for me whenever I do a Syracuse game to take the fan part of it out. And that's right. another thing I was proud of was like, you know, even my UConn friends would say you, anybody watched the game would never know that you went to either one of those schools. And that's that's the ultimate compliment when you do it. And I was just really proud of the broadcast. You know, I thought producing, the directing, the camera work, the whole thing, Jay, Bill, you know, it was one of those times where you know, a lot of times you have a great game dropped in your lap. But the broadcast isn't very good. 
you know, a lot of times it's a terrible game and the broadcast is great and everybody on TV is clicking at all cylinders and nobody even notices because the game was bad. Like I've had plenty of games where I didn't think I was very good. People are like, wow, you were amazing because the game was tremendous, right? It's like, so <laughs> the game usually influences how people think you did or didn't do. But uh, I was really proud. Remember, somewhere in here, I, I have a little statue. The It won like the National Broadcast of the Year from the wow. National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. So um, I, I think it really might have been actually the best TV broadcast of anything that I've ever been a part of, in addition to it being a great game. So that's part of what, uh, you know, great game is not strong enough. And uh, you know, to give them their due, you know, part of it, too, you know, the guys diving on the floor on both teams in the fourth and fifth overtime, um, I thought the officiating was terrific. You know, it really can't be a classic game if you spend a lot of time hung up on the officiating. I thought those guys did a great job. And of course, they were out there for the entire uh, game, and they're a, they were a lot older than you guys were at the yeah. time, too. And they're running up and down, and they don't get to come out of the game. So uh, I give them uh, <laughs> yeah. a lot of credit. I'm trying to remember. I think it was Bob Donato and John Cal. John, John Cal, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I don't remember who the third was, which is terrible, right, because – but anyway, it's uh, and then there was a lot of funny postmortems. You know, I remember Raff, uh, Bill Raftery, in one of the articles about it, was quoted as saying, "It's the first." You know, he lives in New Jersey, as you know, and he he said, uh, "It's the first time I ever got home from New York City after three in the morning, and Joni wasn't mad at me." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I remember they were making the announcements about. You know, if you're taking the train to Long Island or Connecticut or whatever, like the last train is going to leave in 10 or 15 minutes and nobody got up and left. Like you weren't leaving the game. And then uh, now you got so many text messages at 1.30 in the morning, you know, right after the game ended from people just saying the same thing. Like I wanted to shut this off two hours ago and I couldn't. I got a call the next morning from Bob Costas, who was on his honeymoon in Hawaii. And he called and he said, I have to tell you the story. He said, so last night I'm getting dressed. Obviously, it's earlier out there. Um, so he said, I'm watching the game, getting ready to go. We're, and we're going to this restaurant that is famous for its sunset. So the game goes into overtime. And I asked my wife, could you call the restaurant? Just see, you know, can we show up 15 minutes late? Because I need to see the end of this game. So she calls. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> goes to another overtime honey, can you call again and see if we can push it back again a few more minutes? And I think he said, like, the third overtime, he told her, we're going to go tomorrow. Because she was like, we're going to miss the sunset, right? It's the whole thing. Said, we'll go tomorrow. Like, I need to see the rest of this game. So, uh, and then he stuck with it for the rest of the game, like so many other people did. And there was just so many stories like that. It's one of those games that people remember where they were when they were watching it. Oh, yeah, w w without question. I remember going – um, I think it was me and AO after we, we went across the street to a diner and there was probably four people in the diner, but all four people st stood up and, and, yeah. and started oh, clapping. That's the other part of it that I remember, you know, like Jay and Bill and I stood up and clapped at the end of the game for both teams, which I, we had never done that before. I never done it since, you know, but it was just, you appreciated the effort on both sides. No question. And there were great performances on both sides. You know, they're, the UConn effort was valiant uh, in so many ways. So, yeah, it uh, yeah, it was a special, special night. It really was one of the, as you said, uh, if there was a, been a better game in the history of college basketball, I'd like to see what it was. And, and I think what made it better was just like the rivalry between because Coach Beheim, Coach Calhoun, like you know, they had they had some tension between them. They're not they're just super super competitive. And then you know Jerome Dice and myself, AJ Price, you know AO and Thabit. And, and, right. and, and you know the Big East, it, it was yeah. just kind of like Jeff I said, Adrian, right? I'm trying Jeff, to think who else is on your team. Jeff Adrian, Johnny, Johnny yeah. Paul, um, Christoph Ogenwan. Ogenwan. Yeah, I remember Paul Harris missed uh, what, like three or four layups or dunks in a, in a <laughs> row. Yeah. In a row, got it back uh, and put it back and got fouled and, and won. Yeah. Then we talked about the big shot that Andy hit. You know, um, I remember that. You know, it's just a and one of the other postmortems. You know, we get done. And it's, uh, you know, as you know, it's the second game of the night. So, you know, it's why it got over at 126 in the morning, whatever, 122. Yeah. And then, you know, ESPN, like Sports Center was supposed to have been on, you know, two hours before or whatever. So 
They said, all right, guys, you know, you got to stay in your seat there because we're going to do a live hit on Sports Center, and then we had to do something for something else. And so we were there for a little bit after the game. And MSG is completely empty, right? I mean, it's probably now 2 in the morning, maybe a little later. And from the tunnel across the court from where we sit at center court, from the tunnel where you guys went out, here comes Mr. Happy Coach. <laughs> and he said, do you think we're in the tournament now? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, just into the solitude of, uh, of MSG. So, you know, there's, there's a, well, obviously we've talked about it, but there's a, and I'm sure you are the same way. You know, there's so many things I remember about, uh, about that game. It's classic. Classic. Yeah. Well, yeah. When, One of the uh, greatest of all time. And not just college, but I mean, that's when people ask me like, what's the greatest game that you've ever called in any sport? That's, you know, if that's not it, it's tied for it. I don't know. You know, you, the, the world series games were dramatic and there've been a few other things, but, but that there's nothing like that game. Yeah. It was, and you, we talked about the storylines. I mean, it was, it, that's, that made it even more intense. And then to have it go to that, I mean, yeah, it, you know, it would have been incredible between any two teams, but if that it was Syracuse and UConn, you know, both teams that had won national championships not long ago, had a long standing rivalry, the two Hall of Fame coaches, you know, a lot of terrific players on both teams, you know, first round draft picks on both teams. Um, and then all the plays, the shots, the the drama of your shot getting waved off, you know, the we mentioned Syracuse never being ahead. Uh your man Justin Thomas. <laughs> I can still. He was in the four, He was. It, it, it was like it, it was like jumping jacks. Yeah, <laughs> it had to be fifth <laughs> overtime, right? It was. Yeah, I think so. You know, and uh, yeah, there was just so much that went into making it one of those things. You know, unique is an overused word, but it, that was unique because there, there's never been a game like that. Right, right away, it was an ESPN classic. They they yeah. put it like right. I think right when I got to the hotel, they started replaying the game. As they as should. They, yeah, as they yeah. should. That no, was, was pretty cool. That was an instant classic. You know, that still gets replayed from time to time. And um, it'll it'll live on forever. And again, it's like we were saying about the Michigan, Michigan State ending. You don't have to be a fan of those two teams to remember. They're, you know, people, sports fans, college basketball fans who remember that SU-UConn game and, and will for a long time. 